test flight, obviously, in the Hawker Hunter. One of my favorite planes as of recently, and it might be my all-time favorite jet. I, I don't know yet. It's getting there. It's It's got a sweet spot for me. Now we're playing with the blind setting, throw up those quotations, because I figure you guys need something to look at while we talk for a little while. So the biggest thing is knowing your aircraft, right? So what does this mean essentially when we talk about this, knowing your aircraft? Now, yeah, you can know the nation. Yeah, you can know what type of aircraft it is. But I'm talking about these little specificities of the aircraft. Is it an energy fighter? Is it a turn fighter? What's its best strength? What's its best weakness? Well, worst weakness, I should say. So, Hawker Hunter, for example. If I asked you guys right now, what would you say the Hawker Hunter is? Well, we'd get the common answer that it is a British jet, right? Yes, it's a British jet. Is it a fighter aircraft? Yes, of course. Does it have the best guns in the game? Yes. What are those guns? Four 30mm Aiden cannons. Okay. Fire rate. One of the fastest fire rates in the game. Look. So, what, what does the fire rate tell you, right? Now, when I'm saying know your aircraft, you need to know the ins and outs of your aircraft. So, knowing that it has 430s is good. Knowing the spread of the guns is better. Knowing how to implement them in certain situations is the best. So, with these guns, we get a large amount of ammo and they are tightly grouped, very fast firing guns. So you can spray a line, and if a plane flies through it, he will get hit. Most of the time, you'll one shot. Other planes that you can't do that with are like the MiG-15. So for example, you spray with the MiG-15, it has 137 that shoots slower than, you know, arguably most guns in the game. So it goes do, 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 do. While it's doing that, every time it's not shooting around, a plane can fit through that gap where it's going. That, on top of that, if the plane is not spaded, it's not shooting 100% accurate, right? So, let's say, for example, an enemy plane is flying in front of me, and I'm tracking him. Alright, we're tracking him, we're tracking him, we're tracking him. I can throw those out, and if he's flying anywhere, if the rounds are going to hit him, right? Let's say he's in the sweet spot, and the rounds are going to hit him, they will find him, because they form a line. They form a nice, beautiful little line, and they will kill him. Now, with a MiG-15, you're going do-do-do-do-do, and let's say one of the rounds goes off, off to the right, one goes down a little bit, one goes to the left. They're not going to hit 100% of the time. The percentage of you hitting relies solely on your timing you know and no luck at all or no randomness it's 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 all about skill the mig-15 guns are a lot harder to aim than these another thing to do that is interesting about these these guns or guns on most planes is you have to take into account where they're located on the fuselage so as you can see these guns are very low on the fuselage right there see where they are so what does that mean when I'm turning they're gonna they're gonna shoot underneath where I think they're gonna be you know I I get this view that they're gonna come straight out of my nose and they're not they're actually a little bit underneath so you have to aim a little bit farther ahead than you normally would and certain things like that now we're gonna go hop into a different plane so I can show you some other things about knowing your aircraft all right ladies and gentlemen where did we leave off am i right so it's been a couple days since i recorded this series so you guys have watched the beginning part and i have to try to remember what i was saying so i believe we left off on guns now knowing your aircraft is a lot more than just the guns the weaponry is obviously one of the most important aspects of the plane because that's what's going to kill people realistically you're not going to ram every kill you get you know what i mean so what I was saying was the hunter's guns are very good at putting a line and you know that a plane won't be able to fly through that line without getting hit at least once. The MiG-15 ain't so much, so like, just an example, do you see that spray? A plane that's 75, .75 out will be able to fly through that without getting hit. So another thing I want to talk about, energy retention, right? So you have to know how well your plane is at keeping its energy like how good your plane is at keeping its energy so the mig-15 is pretty good at this for example it has a very fast acceleration 
is very, like pretty good. It doesn't bleed speed out too much. And it's good at turning. So like, as you can see, I'm going to do a full turn here. You see, I'm going to lose around 100 kph from it. Almost 100 kph. If I did that in the Hunter, I'd probably lose more than 100. The Hunter really loses speed fast. And you have to know if you're playing bleed speed not, or not. You also need to know how well it turns, how fast it turns. So the maneuverability of your plane depends on how you're going to fly it. So Spitfire, for example, very fast turner, very good at turning, very good at doing maneuvers, right? That is a turn fighter. That's a dog fighter. A Yak, pretty good at turning, pretty good at uh, energy retention, pretty good at acceleration. That's a dog fighter. A D13, you're not going to beat a Spitfire in a D13 in a turning competition. So the D13 is more of an energy fighter. Boom and zoom. Now, if you don't know this term energy fighter, what that means is you use your energy to your advantage. So, for example, I'm in this MiG, right? Now, the MiG is basically an energy fighter, too, though. Uh, it can turn fight with jets at tier pretty well. It actually has the best turn rate of all the jets, but it has such a fast acceleration and good climb rate that using it as a boom and zoom energy aircraft is fantastic. So, let's say there's a plane here. I take my shots. I'm about to overshoot him. Pull right up. Go back up again, and he won't be able to touch me. Now, that's a representation of what you would do in a D-13, a TA, a BF-109. They're energy fighters. They're being boom and zoomers. Most of the German planes are. You know, they're not fantastic turners. So knowing your plane's maneuverability helps you in a lot of situations. You need to know how fast you're going. Really read that stat card. Don't take it to heart because some of the stats are wrong. But really read the stat card and uh, understand, you know, at least raw stat-wise why why you're doing this compared to other planes why your planes a little bit faster why you think your planes faster knowing your aircraft is really it is the most important basic of becoming a very good war thunder pilot now i know this sound a little jambled first video of the day first time in front of the mic and i also don't remember where i left off but if i redid the whole video i feel like i would lose a lot of ground you know what i mean i said a lot of good things in the beginning but we're going to continue on we're going to go look at some stack cards of different planes, just so I can really show you why uh, these planes are boom and zoomers, what they need to do. So here we are taking a look at the A6M2 Zero, right? Ryzen, Zero, whatever. It is a Zero. It is the trademark Japanese aircraft, and this is a turn fighter. This is probably the best example of a turn fighter. It has very low speed in a straight line. Uh, not that great at climbing. It has a decent climb rate, but it's not that great. Uh, it's actually pretty awful. But the turn time is fantastic. This thing will turn on a dime. The guns are pretty good. So knowing that it turns on a dime, but it can't outrun most of the American planes that it faces, this is a turn fighter. And how you want to play this all depends on using your enemy's energy, energy against them and making them mess up. So playing, a, maybe hopefully you get some of those noob players, right, and they'll turn with you. You turn with them, you beat them in the turn, you kill them. Easy peasy. Now, if somebody's very good with using their energy, they're going to dive on you over and over and over again repeatedly. Now, what you need to do is figure out how to dodge those. Now, I'm going to tell you that in a later series. Obviously, I can't tell you that in this video. I mean, I could, but it would take way too long, and it would not be valuable for what I'm telling you. But I just, just wanted you guys to understand what a, what a proper turn fighter is. Now there are hybrid turn fighters. We're gonna go through to the British tree because they have a lot of these. Now I would say a Tempest Mark V. We'll put the Mark V in crew just so you can see it. Now I would say the Tempest Mark V, this is one of my favorite aircraft by the way, is a hybrid fighter. You can use its energy, it's deadly fast. This thing is quick, right? It has fantastic armament, but it can also turn. It can turn pretty well, especially at high, you know, like high tier games, high tier engagements. It can outturn a decent amount of planes and not even if it can't outturn, but you can usually, depending on the situation, turn outturn people because of their energy. So obviously higher energy, higher speed, less maneuverability for planes. You know what I mean? So if you're going a lower speed and a plane tries to overshoot like tries to dive on you and he turns, you might be able to turn with him just because he's going so fast. And you'll have a split second where you can put shots on him. So this is more of a hybrid uh, you know, fighter, you know, it has more options in terms of what you can do. It's, it lends itself easier. It is more forgiving. Now, a plane that's not so forgiving, we're going to take a look at that. It's the Focke-Wolf 2. No, I'm kidding. So a plane that's not so forgiving is the D-13. 
Now, this is arguably one of the best premiums in the game, but it is a very hard premium to learn if you're new to the game. Now, I know everybody here who's watching this video as a D13 can attest to that. You guys have had a hard time learning. I had a hard time learning this plane, especially when it fought a lot of jets. It still fights jets, but there was a time in this game where it fought a lot of jets. There was also a time in this game when it was very, very overpowered. I say right now it's pretty balanced. You can do pretty well on it. But the thing about the D13 is it's a decent climber. It is very good energy retention, and it is quick as hell. So you have a plane that's quick as hell, right, and holds energy very well. You don't want to be turning and bleeding the speed. You want to keep as much speed as you can. So you dive on people, keep your energy, and then uh, pull up like I showed in the MIG video. It's called bouncing. Well, at least I call it bouncing. So you're bouncing targets because it looks like a big loop. Um, now... The best way to turn in this plane is like, like I said, Emelman's. You know, if you don't know what an Emelman is, I'll show you again in a, in a later series. I'm just trying to convey the different types of planes. So this is an energy fighter. This isn't even an, like it's a boom and zoomer, but it's an energy fighter. You need to keep your energy in this plane. So knowing your plane is probably the most important thing in the game. I can't stress that enough. I think I've probably said it like 30, 40 times. Looking at the stat cards, understanding what to do, how to use your guns, what guns you have. And getting used to the guns. Now, I would say the best thing to do if you're a new pilot, let's say you're a new pilot and you're going down, you want to go down the German tree. You finally get one of your 109s or a Focke Wolf. So you get a Focke Wolf A1. When you play these planes, try to get used to the guns. Don't, don't try to be the best player. Don't get greedy. Don't go for crazy shots. Just try to get used to the guns. Once you really start to get a feel for the gun, any plane can be fantastic because you know where to aim. Knowing where to aim is the literally the most crucial thing of this game. I, I remember playing the Hunter. A lot of people hated on the Hunter, right? Oh, it's a shitty aircraft. It's, it's not that great at turning. What's the point? And now we start to play it a lot, right? I start to play it a lot. I am decently in in modifications now. I mean, this is from a week of playing stock a couple, a couple times a week. Right, so I'm decently in in, air, in modifications, especially for jets. They take forever to unlock, but I learned the guns of this plane, and I feel more confident. I got an ace game in this. Now, of course, most of that is attributed to being in the right place at the right time. You know, if I wasn't in that spot of the map, I probably wouldn't have got those kills. But I still hit all of my shots. You know, I missed a couple on the last kill, but like most of the beginning shots, I was hitting from crazy distance crazy accurate and that's just learning the guns knowing where to aim quick taps and you can take out enemies especially with these Aidens they don't need a lot of you know lead to kill somebody you hold hold down the, the mouse button for like five seconds not even five seconds half second whatever I, I'm getting off topic learn your guns so you get a good feel for them even if you have to go into arcade and start to see how the guns work get a good feel for them go into RB Get your confidence up and go kill some planes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this jamble of a first video. I tried my best to stress to you guys how important it is to learn your aircraft. Give it some time. Uh, don't give up on the first try. You know, you fly your plane, you don't like it. Oh, why did I grind for this piece of shit? No. Keep playing it, get used to it, and you will see success. Now the next video will come out very shortly, I can promise you. Uh, it will be on the second channel. Like I said, I dropped a bomb today. I'm moving my War Thunder stuff over to the second channel, except for big, big things like dev, blog, uh, dev servers and, you know, big new games and not new games, but like new planes, new tanks will be on this channel. But everything else will be on the second channel, including this series. So if you want to keep seeing this series, check the link in the description. Go sub to the other channel. I'm sorry about that, but uh, go sub to the other channel. And I'll see you guys over there. I'm not going to skip a beat. I'm going to be posting a lot of... I got <laughs> I gotta change this. I'm going to be posting a lot of War Thunder content over there. At least one a day, like I'm doing here, with some World of Warships and all of the other games that you guys enjoy. So I hope you guys like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.